The time has come, my boys. For today, our topic is... Logic. Yeah, you probably know that I've made a video about logic a few years ago. Please don't watch it. But it was horrible. Plus, there came some game updates. Um, anyway, I think it's time to reboot the topic. And I'm sure you won't regret it. So what is logic? Logic is a group of tools that can turn your creation to something better than a general brawl. It helps a lot when it comes to your level storytelling, so you can create some decent stories. And, uh, of course, uh, complicated logic always impresses whoever is playing your level. Talking about levels, about map making, logic is probably the most complex thing in the editor. So, if you want to become big boys, we need to study. Ok, so here's the video structure. First we study every single prop, I'll explain all of the settings and uh, what you can do with it. And then we go into editing and I show you how you can use these props to build uh, some of the most required things like uh, openable doors, code panels and so on. And if you just need some specific prop, uh, there are time codes for all of them. Ok, to the topic. All of the logic props can be broken into three different categories uh, – triggers, triggerable and waypoints. Yeah, that's a lot of objects, but uh, as I've said earlier, we are going to study every single one of them we, 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 we learn. Yeah, okay, we learn. We came here to learn. Yeah, let's start with the waypoint. Oh, and uh, two words about hotkeys before that, uh, there's uh, just one key you'll ever need with logic, it is T. Here's how it works, while in edit logic section select any logic trigger you need, press T button, click any object you want and uh, that's it, you're, you're, you're done and uh, you gain 2% of a power and uh, yeah. Good job. So, waypoints make things move in a certain location or direction. It can be either a primitive or a group of objects or a person. Waypoints' only properties are position and rotation. To create a path and set a movement, you just need multiple waypoints connected together. With first waypoint selected, press T button and connect it to the second one. Then move your selection to the next waypoint and connect it to the next one. And so on and uh, then you just uh, link your primitives or characters to any waypoint in your line. With characters everything is quite simple, connect it with even a single waypoint and you're good. With primitives and objects uh, there's a bit of a change. If you link a primitive with a single waypoint it will be teleported instantly once it's triggered and if you create a normal path then everything is fine but now we have way more options to set but it's all just because of the primitives so we'll get to that later. Now when you know the basics, uh, time for the super hint segment. Super hint number one, you can loop any path you create. Super hint number two, you can edit the character's speed depending on the amount of free space you leave between his waypoints. And uh, if you're watching this video from the future, then this can be changed, but uh, for now things are like this. Ok, we are done with the waypoints and now let's talk about triggers. Buttons. All buttons are the same. Button has two logic properties, logic effect and an ability to unpress the button. Logic effect will make your button turn things on, turn things off or switch from one of uh, these states to another. Ability to unpress allows to switch logic effect back to its previous state, if you want to give player this power, of course. Logic zones. Zones also have those two same options like buttons do, the difference here is uh, that one of them is now called logic works once, but uh, it's uh, that same can be unpressed and uh, now you know it, so now you now you're smart. Let's see what else do we have here. Starts general combat. Level end zone. Kills enemies and players. No comment. Also, you can check all of these boxes to make your logic zone uh, kill half of the entire universe, I don't know. Oh, and uh, you can make it so that your zone triggers on enter or on exit. Oh, and the last thing. You can't add more than 254 zones. Don't know why would you need that many, but I needed that one day. Enemy tracker. 
This thing gives a logic signal when person attached to it dies. You want to make it so that a player has to defeat some big boss to proceed? Uh, here you are. Just uh, connect the tracker with one or more characters and then with your primitive straps, uh, sound props or whatever you have and uh, that's it. Also, you can set if uh, enemy tracker gives signal when all of the group mates are dead, uh, when uh, just one of them is dead, or you can set uh, your own special amount of uh, characters you want to die first before signal appears. Timer. Timer is uh, required to turn things on and off and has uh, three options. Frequency is the length of the turned on mod, delay first is the length of the turned off mod, and uh, times to run is... Mm, Times to run. Okay, done with the triggers, now let's see which things we can actually trigger. Traps. Each trap has two modes. First mode, a trap activates only when somebody steps on it. This mode is called no timer based. Second mode, a trap switches on and off after a period of time. This mode is called timer based. And as you could already guess, there's an option to change between these two modes. And as you can see, these things are very loud. Well, this is why there is a play sounds option you can uncheck. Perfect. Three last options are for the timer based mode. Active time is the amount of seconds your trap stays turned on. Inactive time is the amount of seconds your trap stays turned off. Inactive progress is a parameter which says uh, which of the two previous stages goes first. Zero is for inactive time, one is for active time. Once you trigger the logic, inactive progress switches to the opposite digit, and that's actually the only effect logic makes. That means, if you want to make some trap which is always on, you set its active time to a maximal number and set its inactive progress to 1. Oh, and uh, also, all traps have the same properties. Characters. Connecting characters and different triggers, you can get completely different results. If you link a person and a button, pressing on it will switch the person to a combat mode. If you link a person and a timer, the person will also switch to the combat mode once timer gives first signal. If you link a person and a waypoint, a person is gonna start moving on path. Uh, and uh, if you link a person and an enemy tracker, it's gonna give a signal once character dies. Now the logic zones. Uh, if enemy is connected with any zone, he won't start fighting in a general combat until you provoke him yourself, or until you trigger the zone by entering or exiting it. You can keep your logic zones out of bounds if you use them only to make enemies not to get into a fight by themselves. Primitives. Remember how I made a tutorial on the primitives a few years ago? No? Forget it, now it's useless. Mostly you can edit primitives interaction with waypoints. Match path rotation option makes your primitive rotate together with waypoints in its path. Loop path means your primitive is gonna get back to a first waypoint and repeat its movement, otherwise it's gonna stop on the last waypoint in the chain. If your primitive's movement is not looped and uh, you still want a player to be able to activate uh, the movement once again, then you can use a restart path option, which allows you to retrigger your primitive and make it start its movement from the beginning. Restart at start point determines whether a primitive that is restarted will begin at its original starting point or the beginning of the path. Here's how it is supposed to work. Say you've got uh, a few primitives and they all move along the same path, but uh, all of them have uh, different uh, starting points. And uh, with uh, this option turned on, you can make it so that uh, when you restart your animation, your primitive appears not on its starting point, but at the beginning of the entire path. Honestly, I have no idea how to use it. I can't come up with any possible situation when this option would be helpful still developer sided it, so I don't know. If you come up with any ideas, uh, well, it's good to be you, I guess. Next, reverse direction at path end makes your primitive change the path direction once it reaches its end, and uh, reverse direction when stopped is similar to the above option, but uh, will change direction every time the primitive stops and gets restarted again. Elevators! Oh, and also, to make primitives move, you'll need some logic trigger. Although, if you hit the start moving on path box, the primitive is gonna start moving by itself. Then, obviously, you'll need a trigger not to start, but to pause the movement. Of course, also you can set uh, the path speed, uh, the starting point, but uh, it doesn't concern the logic topic, so we won't talk about that. Lights. From the start of a level, lights can be turned on or turned off, and uh, any trigger with uh, toggle type will switch between these modes, and so principle is the same for turn on or turn off types. Sound prop. When triggered, 
starts playing a sound you've set. It's gonna stop when track is over, or it can restart itself if you pick loops option in properties. In this case, the sound can be turned off anytime by triggering the appropriate logic effect. Also, it can be stopped by any other sound effect which uses the same sound layer. Restart self means that it will start itself from the beginning again if it's already playing and is triggered. Otherwise, if it's already playing, it won't restart. Victory prop. This little thing will activate all level end zones no matter what terms of win your level has. Whew, finally done with the theory, now let's get to practice. After all I said, I hope that you won't have any troubles with lights or adding a sound effect, simple stuff. So mostly I'll focus on something a bit more complicated. Before getting started, uh, let me remind you about the following tools. In level settings, set duplication offset to 000 to prevent objects from spawning aside when copied. And when you need to move something aside and place it back afterwards, uh, hold Ctrl hotkey to move any objects on grid. Also, this hotkey allows you to rotate objects faster and more accurate. And you can edit the grid size if you press G and these keys. Garrett style doors. These are the easiest doors to make. First step, make a door using primitives, then remember its coordinates. Next, uh, add a waypoint, link it to the door, and uh, set the same coordinates the door has. And finally, copy the waypoint, move it to where the door is supposed to move, and at this moment you can group the other door parts and the moving segment if your door consists of multiple props. If you group uh, the door parts before linking it to the waypoint, there's a big chance the animation won't work properly. As you can already guess, the elevator style doors are made the same way, the only difference is that you'll need to, to repeat the operation twice, because there are two doors, you know. The last door type, uh, imitating the casual editor doors, is not that popular, yet still it looks very cool. The trick is to add an additional primitive to where door hinges are supposed to be, and then link waypoints to it to make primitive work like an additional X of rotation. Then group it to the rest of your door. If you want to make an elevator, the actions are the same. The only difference is that uh, you'll need to make the booth and optionally add driver's direction to the moving parts. An enemy spawns action players can't reach. The trick here is that enemies can go through moving primitives no matter if primitives have collision or not. So you just make your room with the enemies, then place some transparent primitive between it and the main area and loop two waypoints together. And that's how you make your enemies spawn. The boss fight. <coughs> you add a character and link it to the enemy tracker. Then you connect enemy tracker to any traps or moving primitives you need uh, can connect it to the victory prop as well. That's it. Making buttons disappear after being pressed. This tiny addition is not necessary, of course, uh, still makes your map look more professional. Add a waypoint somewhere out of bounds of your map. Next, place a primitive somewhere near the button. You can make it transparent or remove its collision or hide it somewhere out of bounds as well, up to you. Now link the primitive with the waypoint and the button and group things together. Making spinning elements. If you want to make a fan or helicopter blades, uh, you do the following. In your object, uh, pick the detail which has the axis of rotation going through its center. And remember its position coordinates. Now add a waypoint, uh, give it the same coordinates and use the grid tool to move it aside. Copy the waypoint, move it aside again and rotate it on 90 degrees. Repeat that uh, two more times, so that uh, you'll get uh, four waypoints with uh, angles of uh, 0, 90, 180 and uh, 270 degrees. Connect them all together to make a looped path and link with the primitive. Build the rest of your prop with a grid tool get all the waypoints back to the axis of rotation, group your object and place it where you need. 
Now move uh, each uh, one of uh, the four waypoints just a little bit aside. Just a little. This will prevent your construction from a pretty weird glitch, which uh, I guess is going to be fixed anytime soon. But for now you can use the following method. If your primitive uh, spins too fast, which is also a common issue, you can just set its speed lower. Making a door locked with a code. Say you're making a puzzle or hiding an ear stack uh, and uh, want to add the code door. Here's the easiest way to do that. Make the panel, come up with the code, mine is gonna be 179. So add three primitive doors, one for each code digit and connect them with buttons representing these numbers. Then link them with some waypoint out of bounds. Now place your doors uh, to where uh, your door is supposed to be. If player presses the right buttons, uh, all the doors will disappear and allow him to pass. Add one more door out of bounds, connect it to all the wrong buttons and to one more waypoint and place this waypoint uh, at the same coordinates where your other doors are. This will block the passage if player presses the wrong button. Making an object with multiple moving parts. I guess that uh, most likely you won't build uh, anything consisting of multiple moving parts like that dragon, but I'll explain how to do that uh, just in case. Okay, the principle here is that all of the objects in your moving construction have to move at the same speed and uh, with your waypoints you kind of set the keyframes of uh, where your primitive uh, is supposed to be at the exact uh, period of time, at the exact uh, space. Each uh, of uh, the primitives uh, moves uh, separately, but they move at the same speed and they have uh, some keyframes they pass. That's why you get the illusion of the construction moving whole, as it's uh, one single object. Well, looks like that's it. I teach you everything, now it depends on you how to use these knowledges, but you're definitely ready to shake down the workshop with your epic ideas. I'd like to give you one last advice in the end. Think about logic like about adding sauce to your meal. Adding a few is enough to make things better, but the more you add, higher the chances you'll ruin something or everything. And uh, like you shouldn't create a meal only based on a sauce you want to use, you shouldn't build your level only based on some single logic feature you've just discovered. Experiments are great, but if your logic breaks at some point, you'll most likely spend all the time trying to fix it, lose your motivation and uh, you know what happens next. It's better to add uh, lots of little logic connections here and there, complicated constructions are a big risk. But if you feel ready to mount uh, the capricious logic tool, then good luck. Thanks for watching, if this video gets 10 likes, I'll be so happy I'll probably make another video for this dead channel. Maybe with general editor tips and tricks, maybe with Paint It On Red Let's Plays, I don't know. Anyway, make amazing levels and good luck with the workshop dudes. Bye.